Hello everybody, welcome back to Arise and um, back to our Hebrew calendar section, our limited series on the Hebrew calendar. It's so good to have you all here. And right up front, if you have missed any of the months, if this is the first time you're tuning in for this particular series on the Hebrew calendar, please feel free to go back and have a look at the others that I've recorded, including the introductory one, which explains why I feel the Hebrew calendar is important. And those can all be found on my YouTube channel, Arise with Sally Goodwin. They can be found on my website, um, sallygoodwin.com. They can be found via Facebook. Uh, they are in many places <laughs> available to you. So they should be easy to find. If you can't find them, WhatsApp me or email me or instant message me or whatever it is. And I'll point you in the right direction or send you the link. But um, it's very... It's very good to know what God's calendar is, and God's calendar is the Hebrew calendar. That's what he started off with. So, um, and although he's not bound by time and he's not bound by calendars and dates, he does work within certain orders and cycles. And um, if you do study the Hebrew calendar, you will be amazed by how relevant it is in terms of what we go through as believers and how sometimes we just go through things and we have no idea why they're happening. And if we just would pay a little bit more attention to our Jewish roots and to the Hebrew calendar, we would actually be able to understand what is going on in the spirit over those times. So we are now entering into the month of Av. And Av is exactly that, Av, A-V. And I could not find a an appropriate Google voice to pronounce the name of. And I think because it's such a short word and it's such a short name, nobody thinks that anyone will have trouble pronouncing it. So you'll have to take my word for it. It's pronounced of. And it is um, the, the word of or the name of, it literally means Abba or father. That's where it comes from. But it also comes from the root meaning of to will or desire. And you, as you'll see as we go forward and examine the month of Av, it very much follows on from last month, from the month of Tammuz. If you didn't watch last month's one, then please go back and watch it because there's kind of a pattern that goes through these couple of months that we're in at the moment. And um, and it's and the month of Tammuz, if you go back and, and listen to it or watch it, you can see that it's a lot about um, choice and making right decisions and, you know, who you're listening to, who you're worshipping. And that continues into the month of Av in terms of um, the root meaning of the word comes from to will or, or desire. And it's basically the question to ask yourself is whose will am I following or whose desire? So is it the will and desire of Abba Father whose name is rooted in the month of Av or is it my own will or desire or the will and desire of other people? So that's what this month is about. And it is um, the from the 10th of July, it's, it starts from the 10th of July to the 8th of August this year. Now, just a reminder, because I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but you know, the Jewish day starts from sunset the day before. So when I tell you that the month runs from, say, the 10th of July to the 8th of August, what I mean is that it starts at sunset on the 9th of July and runs until sunset on the 8th of August because the Jewish people see their day as starting from sunset the day before. I did explain that in the introductory video, but um, I'm just refreshing in case anyone's confused by that. It is the fifth month of the biblical calendar and five always speaks of grace, which is amazing. And it's the 11th month of the civil calendar. So we're coming to the end of the civil calendar. We're coming to the end of 5781. We're looking ahead to move into 5782. And there's some things that we need to get sorted out before we end this year and step into the new year. So, it is the month of Simeon. Now, Simeon, again, as you know, was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. He was one of Jacob's sons. And in Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob is prophesying over his sons as he lies on his deathbed, this is what he says. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Um, there's some Jewish teachings or Jewish um, traditions um, where they believe that Simeon and Levi were twins because they're mentioned together. Quite often they actually believe that they were that they could have been twins. It says Simeon and Levi are brothers, equally headstrong, deceitful, vindictive, and cruel. Their swords are weapons of violence. And that is a very sad 
prophetic word to have to speak over your sons as if you were Jacob. And the reason why that was what Jacob prophesied over them was because of that whole story in Genesis with their sister Dinah. If you remember correctly, Dinah was raped, and um, but then the prince of the um, town that raped them, I forget, I think it's Shechem, Shechem, yeah, um, and he, but he actually fell in love with her, and then he wanted to marry her, and so, you know, he approached Jacob, and they said, you know, he wants to marry her, he's fallen in love with her, he wants to, you know, um, make an honest woman out of her, and a, a you know, atone for what he had done, actually, and Jacob agrees, and says that, you know, if the, and then they, he talks to his sons and they say the whole town must be circumcised. All the men must be circumcised in order for them to enter into a covenant with the Israelites. And of course, when all the men were recovering from their circumcisions, um, Simeon and Levi went in, drew their swords and slaughtered every male in the town as revenge for their sister Dinah's rape. And um, we all know that rape is a shocking, horrendous, terrible thing. And um, rape, whether it was in the Old Testament or the New Testament or today's day you know there's no um there's no lessening of what took place there but the god was very specific about saying vengeance is mine says the lord you know and he they took and in fact instead of coming under the authority of Jacob as the head to decide what the way forward was. They took matters into their own hands and they avenged their sister. And I'm sure that um, that is something that many of us could relate to. And it is how we would feel if something like that happened to somebody close to us or happened to us. So I'm not minimizing what happened at all, but because of Simeon and Levi's reaction to what happened, what was spoken over them was that they are headstrong, deceitful, vindictive, and cruel, and their swords are weapons of violence. So they were deceitful because they deceived Jacob as well as the men in the town and by be making them believe that they were going to covenant with them. And then actually they had no intention of doing that right from the beginning. And then they wielded their swords, not in protection or in defense of, you know, a threat to their family, but actually as weapons of violence. And that is the month of Simeon. Simeon's name actually means to hear, to be concerned, or gracious hearing, which is so opposite to actually how Simeon reacted there. He, he was concerned, but he didn't hear, actually. And the issue with Simeon that really struck me is that he is not in Deuteronomy because if you've read, watched the other months you'll know that every month is associated with the tribe of Israel and every tribe of Israel every son um, has a prophecy Jacob prophesied over them in Genesis 49 and then Moses prophesied over them in Deuteronomy 33 and if you go and read Deuteronomy 33 Moses never prophesied over Simeon there was never a mention of the tribe of Simeon in Deuteronomy. And there is no specific explanation for that in in biblical terms. In other words, it is in, in, in the actual word of God. And there is no explanation for that. The tribe of Simeon does appear later on. It is uh, mentioned further down, so they're not wiped out completely. But uh, the... Jewish teachings uh, say that Levi redeemed himself, the tribe of Levi, they actually redeemed themselves to such a degree that they were chosen to be priests. Um, and the tribe of Simeon never redeemed themselves. If you track the, you know, what happens with the tribe of Simeon, Simeon going forward as they exodus and they go through the wilderness and they head towards the promised land, you'll see that often the terrible things that happened and the things that we've um, they actually went against what Moses had, had instructed was often men from the tribe of Simeon. So it seems so sort of, I don't know, ridiculous to me that Simeon's name means to hear and gracious hearing, but it seems as though if you look through the, the history of the tribe of Simeon, they didn't hear very well. So that is something to pay attention um, in this month of Av because we need to ensure that we hear God correctly, and we actually make the right choices. So you have Simeon and Levi, who um, Jewish tradition says they were twins, and you have them both partaking in a terrible act, but Levi redeemed himself and Simeon did not. So there is a choice involved there. And actually, if you look at the symbol, the alphabet, the Hebrew letter of the alphabet that goes with this month of Av, it is the, word, the letter Tet. T-E-T, tet. 
And Tet symbolizes exactly the same thing. Two choices. It actually symbolizes the two possibilities of man. If you look at the way the Hebrew letter is written, it can symbolize either a man in rebellion before God or a man surrender to God. It's actually the only Hebrew letter that is paradoxical. It presents good and evil as a choice. So you either choose evil and you're therefore the man in rebellion to God, or you choose good and you're the man who is surrendered to God. So Av is a month to make those choices, to, to be sure that you're walking in the correct choice in your life and that you're not being a Simeon. And unfortunately, the, the month of Av was supposed to be the month that the Israelites stepped into the promised land. The, the ninth of Av actually was supposed to be a day of blessing. It was supposed to be the day when they began the crossover into the promised land. But it was not. And it's so sad that Av follows Tammuz. So in Tammuz, we had the son of the golden calf. And in Av, we have the son of the spies. We have the story of Moses sending the 12 spies, one from each tribe, out into the promised land to scout it out and tell them what it was like. And they came back and they said the fruit that everything God had told them about the promised land was true. The fruit was about, they brought fruit back with them. It was abundant. It was a la indeed a land of milk and honey. And two of them, Joshua and Caleb, were like, we can do this. And the other 10 said, but there are giants in the land. And we are but grasshoppers, grasshoppers in their sight. We cannot take the land. And that was on the 9th of Av. And that, that has determined the, the, the fact that the month of Av becomes a month of choice and discernment and a month where you need to ask yourself the question, whose voice will I listen to? Will I listen to the voice of fear or will I listen to the voice of faith? And what should have been a day of blessing was actually turned into a day of cursing for the Israelites because the sin of the spies invoked a curse on them that followed through the same way as the worship of the golden calf. All of those terrible things happened on the same day in the 17th of Tammuz. Now, if we look at the history of the 9th of Av, and you look at what happened after that, you look at in 587 B.C., Babylon destroyed Solomon's temple temple on the 9th of Av. So this is, these are all things that happened on the 9th of Av. In 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the second temple. So the, the spies, the, the Israelites chose to partner with fear on that day and not believe the good report and not have faith in God to take them into the promised land on the very day that they were supposed to enter into the promised land. And basically the, temp, the two times the temple was destroyed were both on those days. In 135 AD, it was the final defeat of the Jewish people by Rome. In 1095 AD, the first crusade killed thousands of Jews. In 1290 AD, the Jews were expelled from England. In 1492 AD, the Jews were expelled from Spain. In 1942 AD, the Jews departed from the Warsaw ghetto, ghetto to their death camps. And in 2005 AD was the beginning of the expulsion of the Jews from Gaza. All of those things that I've just spoken about in those years started or happened on the 9th of Av. So again, we have this day that is was supposed to be a blessing, but actually is turned into a curse, exactly the same as the worship of the golden calf, a day where Israel was supposed to step into their inheritance. Moses came down from the mountain with the Torah, with their inheritance, basically, and instead of stepping into it, they were worshiping the golden calf, and their inheritance was destroyed right in front of them. And it was only God's mercy that actually took them on a journey where eventually that was restored to them. And you have the same thing happening the, the next month in the, on the 9th of Av, where again, they are right on the brink of stepping into their promised land. They are right there, the day they're supposed to step into their promised land. And what do they do? They choose fear. They choose fear over, over faith. They choose to believe that the giants in the land are too big for God, a God who has provided food for them in the wilderness, water for them in the wilderness, been a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, parted the Red Sea. You know, th this God who had performed all these incredible miracles and sustained them, their shoes hadn't worn out, their clothes hadn't worn out through the wilderness. They reach this point when they're supposed to step over into the promised land and they choose not to believe in him.
despite everything he had done for them. And how often do we find ourselves in that position? How often do you find yourself in the space where you have these testimonies of God's faithfulness in your life and then a situation comes up and suddenly, even though he's done all these things in your life, you struggle to find the faith to believe in him for this thing because this thing just seems so much bigger, Lord, than the other things that you've done. But it's not bigger to God. It only seems bigger to us. And your testimonies of the way he's come through for you up until then are the things that actually should boost your faith for this point, not prevent you from feeling faith. So this month of Av, again, we are still in the weeks of sorrow that end um, this this month on the 18th of July. I think the weeks of sorrow end. Um, and And it's a time to really... Make sure that you are choosing life, that you are honing your gift of discernment, that you are discerning what is happening around you, and that you are making the right choices and that you are listening to the right voice. It is a time to sit before the Lord and say to him, Father, Abba Father, am I hearing you? Or am I listening to the voice of fear or the voice of shame or the voice of doubt or the voice of unbelief? Am I listening to your voice or am I hearing the enemy's voice? Am I hearing my own voice? Am I hearing the voice of my friends and my family or am I hearing you? This is the month to sit with him and figure that out and make the right choices. The constellation associated with this month is Leo, the lion. And the verse that we're going to look at is from Amos. Because this month, the month of Av, as much as it has all of this negativity associated with it, because we have Jesus, we have someone who reverses the curse. So we are in a position where our curse can be reversed. We don't have to labor under the curses that the Jewish people have labored under for years and years and years because they haven't been able to reverse it. Jesus came to reverse all of these things, and we get to walk in that. So the, it's the month of Leo, and it is the month of the lion, and it is a, an extremely prophetic month. For all of you prophetic people out there, for all of you prophets, this is a month where, as I've said already, it is even more important for you to discern whose voice you are hearing because it's a very prophetic month, and you need to be sure that you are prophesying God's voice and God's spirit and not any other voices of negativity as negative as it could potentially be. So we're going to go to Amos 3, and it's actually Amos 3 verse 8, but I'm going to go back one verse. So Amos 3 verse 7 in the Amplified Bible says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. Okay, so that just tells us that God does nothing without first telling a prophet some way. And I think that sometimes when these things take us by surprise, these things are gone in the world and pandemics and crises and earthquakes and tornadoes and blah, blah, blah. And we say no prophet ever prophesied that. I think you probably find that God did actually give that word to a prophet and they were too scared to put it out there. So because God, you know, he doesn't deviate from his word and his word says he will do nothing without revealing his secrets to his secret to his servants, the prophets. So that's verse 7. But then verse 8, this is where um, the Leo and the lion comes in. It says, the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? In this renewed covenant that we're living in, under Jesus because he died for us and because we, we walk in in all the fulfillment of everything that God promised the Jewish people, we get to allow God to roar over our circumstances. So even if there have been places in your life, if, if you sit with God and you say to him, Lord, whose voice am I listening to? And he says to you, you know what? I just need to show you that in this instance, you were listening to that voice. And in this instance, you were actually listening to that voice. And, you know, you didn't actually hear me right in this way. It is not the time to be like, oh, my word, oh, you know, like, okay, this is it. And my life is doomed and I'm never. No, it is the time to say, surely the lion has roared. Who will not fear? God, you will roar over my circumstances. Who will not fear? So if I've made some bad choices, if my discernment hasn't 
you know, hasn't been operating correctly, if I've l listened to the wrong voices, et cetera, et cetera. I can, I can rectify that with you, Father God, because you will roar over my circumstances and you will sort that out. And then who can but prophesy? It is a month, a prophetic month. It is a month for prophecy. And you know, everyone in the body can walk in the gift of prophecy. But it is specifically a month if you walk in the office of the prophet. It is a month to hear the Lord. And you know, as I say, it's the, it's the fifth month of the biblical calendar, which all speaks of grace. But it's the 11th month of the civil calendar. So you're two months away. You're in the, the second last month of this year. So now is the time to look and see what God has for the next year, the year to come. And now is the time to hear his voice. Now is the time to prophesy over people's circumstances, over your circumstances, and make sure that we are allowing God, allowing Jesus to reverse the curse so that we don't walk under the curse as Simeon did, but we actually can be redeemed as Levi was. So that where Simeon was left out because he hadn't redeemed himself, Levi redeemed himself. And you can go and have a look in Genesis at those stories um, of Simeon and Levi and or in, in Exodus, actually, you know, as you as you follow the tribes of Israel through the wilderness and the thing, various things that happened. And it was the um, I can't remember where it was in, in Exodus, but it was when the um, they fought against a group of people and the Israelites prevailed. And then God said to destroy everything and not to bring anything from that group of people into the Israelite camp and uh, someone disobeyed and it was um, um, the and it was someone from the tribe of Simeon and then there was something to do with the Midianite woman yes anyway and the, it was actually the guy from the tribe of Levi who took out his sword and slaughtered the 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 guy and the Midian, Midianite woman who had become into the camp and they weren't supposed to come into the camp I might not have all of those details correct, but um, and I can't remember where it is right now. But go and have a look. Look, look up that story in, in Exodus. We all know the story. And that was where Simeon again chose incorrectly and Levi actually chose to redeem himself. So allow God to roar over your circumstances this month. Allow God to roar over your situation. Allow God to roar over your life. And and. And allow the fear of the Lord to enter your heart and your soul. Bearing in mind the fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. It means awe and trembling and wonderment and, you know, just being so conscious of this God who is the creator of the universe. Allow him to roar and, and, and allow that fear of the Lord to fill you. That you can be someone who is truly surrendered before God in every aspect of your life. Who is truly, truly, truly made sure that you're discerning correctly, you are hearing the right voice and you are making the right choices. There's nothing to fear in any of that. It can only benefit you. So that is my call to you this month. My, my charge to you, my call to action is to, in this month of choice and discernment, ask yourself that question, whose voice will I listen to? And last month, we spoke about rising up, that God is saying rise up, particularly as women. And if that, you know, niggled at you and you haven't been able to get that out of your mind and you know that there's a space that God is calling you to rise up in and you just don't feel able to or you just, you just can't quite get yourself there, ask yourself in this month, whose voice am I listening to? Whose voice am I listening to? What choice am I making here? Whose will and desire am I following? Is it Abba Father or is it my own or the enemy? And let God show you and then let him roar and then prophesy. Prophesy your rising up. Prophesy the reverse of the curse. Prophesy whose voice you're going to listen to. Prophesy it. Speak it out there that you will listen only to the voice of God that you will hear only from God, that that is your destiny, your purpose, and your promise. So I just speak that over you right now. I just encourage you to go take these things, sit with the Lord, and go through them with him and see what he shows you. And then let him roar. Let that fear of the Lord, that wonderful, incredible, amazing awe and wonder for him, completely consume you so that you know without a doubt that his voice is the only voice you will listen to. And then rise up and step out. So I just bless you with that this, this week. 
and I will see you soon. Goodbye.